Good morning, friends. Today we are celebrating the letter V and Valentine's Day. Let me turn my computer so you can see. I hope you can see this at home. But here we have the letter V. There's an uppercase and a lowercase. And the word V, V, Valentine. The first book we're reading talks about the history of Valentine's Day, which is celebrated on February 14th, which is on a Sunday this year. But the other fun thing about the letter V, it's one of the letters in the word love. And in the stories we will read today, you'll understand that Valentine's and Valentine's Day are all about love and letting your friends and family know how much you care. All right, let's get started. Like I said, this first book talks about the history of Valentine's Day. It's a nonfiction book. It was written by Brenda Haugen and illustrated by Todd Oren and was published in 2004 by Picture Window Books. So again, you can't see it here because of our library label, but Valentine's Day. The mail carrier brings pretty cards in red and pink envelopes. The woman from the flower shop is busy delivering roses. Cupid is aiming his bow. We'll talk about Cupid later. Look, all the pink, all the red. You might decorate a box at school to hold cards from friends. Maybe your mom or dad has an extra hug and kiss for you. It's Valentine's Day. V -v Valentine's Day. And look, this heart says, I love you. Love my Valentine. Do you know why we have Valentine's Day? And there you can see a calendar of the month that we're in, February, and the heart is on the 14th, February 14th. People have celebrated love for centuries. Uh, do you know what a century is? A century means 100 years. So if people have celebrated love for centuries, that's many hundreds of years. Ancient people, that means from long ago, ancient people set aside February 14th as a special day of love. At this time, young boys and girls played many games. In one game, each girl wrote her name on a piece of paper and put it in an urn. Urn means a small jar. Each boy would pick a piece of paper with a girl's name on it. He would be paired with that girl for the next town festival. The name Valentine's Day, v -v Valentine's Day, comes from a priest named Valentine who lived long ago. The priest got in trouble for secretly marrying young couples. Old stories tell us that he started the tradition, and tradition means something that parents pass down to their children. Old stories tell us that he started the tradition of sending Valentine cards. He signed a note from your Valentine. And then it says today, millions, millions of Valentine's Day cards are sent in the mail. So there really was a priest named Valentine. 
On Valentine's Day, hearts of all sizes are easy to find. These hearts are usually pink or red. They are on cards. They can even be seen on windows. And I have a big pink heart on our board. And it says here, since ancient times, and again, ancient means long ago, red hearts have stood for love. Love. L-O-V-E, love. Flowers are gifts of love on Valentine's Day. Flower shops are busy on this day. Pretty red roses are symbols of love. Symbol. A symbol is something that represents something else. So the roses are symbols of love. Another symbol of love is Cupid. Remember we mentioned Cupid on our first page? Cupid is a cute chubby boy who shoots arrows, but they don't hurt. They make people fall in love. And that's just a legend. There's really not a Cupid. That's just an old legend. Birds are part of Valentine's Day, too. Old stories say that some birds choose their mates on Valentine's Day. Pictures of doves often appear on Valentine's Day cards. When two people are in love, they are sometimes called lovebirds. A lovebird is a type of parrot that shows affection for its mate. So these are doves. And again, people who fall in love are sometimes called lovebirds. Valentine's Day is a special time to show love. Make a card to give to a friend. Give your mom or dad an extra hug. Be extra nice to everyone. And that's it. And then at the back of this book, they talk about how you can make a Valentine's Day mailbox and facts. In fact, some of the fun facts are interesting. One of them is flower stores sell more flowers on Valentine's Day than almost any other day of the year. And it also says Valentine's Day is celebrated in many countries, including the United States, where we live, Canada, France, Australia, the United Kingdom, and Mexico. So there, and then they talk about some of the words we talked about. And there's one more little picture of Cupid. And in the kit you can pick up after story time this week, I'll have some materials there for you to make Valentine cards and a, a couple of special other surprises. Okay. The next book, I haven't ever read a Peppa book for story time. But this is Peppa's Valentine's Day. And I'm sure some of you have seen Peppa on television. This book was uh, published in 2017 by Scholastic Books. And Peppa was, this book was adapted by Courtney Carboni. And because Peppa lives in the United Kingdom or Great Britain, or sometimes known as England, some of the words that they say on the television program are a little bit different than how we pronounce them in the United States. We'll talk about that. On the TV show, this is Zoe Zebra, Zebra. But in the United States, we say Zebra. Okay, Peppa's Valentine's Day. It's almost Valentine's Day. There are lots of special cards and packages in the mail today. Zoe Zebra is helping her dad, the mailman, deliver letters all over town. She has one special letter for her friend, Peppa Pig. 
Inside, Peppa and George hear the mail come through the slot on the front door. We got some letters, cries Peppa, cried Peppa. She and George bring the letters to Mommy Pig and Daddy Pig as fast as they can. I wonder if there's something for me, says Peppa. You have a valentine from Zoe Zebra, Peppa, says Mommy Pig. What is a valentine, asks Peppa. Mommy Pig smiles. It is a card you send around Valentine's Day to tell everyone you love how much they mean to you, she says. And I can read the card. It says, Happy Valentine's Day. Love, Zoe. And there are some hearts on it. Can I make a valentine for Zoe? Peppa asks. Of course, Mommy Pig says. George wants to help. Peppa makes a card with a big pink heart and a bright red envelope for Zoe. Mommy Pig helps her write a note. It is so much fun that Peppa decides to make valentines for all of her friends. Mommy, what else happens on Valentine's Day? Peppa asks. Valentine's Day is all about spending time with those you love, Mommy Pig says. Can my friends come over and play? Peppa asks. That's a lovely idea, Peppa, Mommy Pig says. We can have a Valentine's Day party. Peppa makes lots of colorful Valentines. Mommy Pig helps her write about her party. They put the Valentines into envelopes and address them to her friends. So she's going to have a party. Peppa can't wait to deliver the Valentines. She goes with her family to Zoe Zebra's house to drop off her card first. Knock, knock. Mr. Zebra answers the door. Special delivery, says Peppa. Zoe runs down the stairs, followed by Mrs. Zebra and Zoe's twin sisters, Zaza and Zuzu. Thank you for the valentine, Zoe, Peppa says. I made you one, too. Peppa hands Zoe her card. Hooray, Zoe says. Wait till you hear the best part, Peppa says. I'm having a Valentine's Day party at my house tomorrow. Yay, cheers, Zoe. I can't wait. Mr. Zebra offers to take Peppa and Zoe around town in his mail truck to deliver the rest of the Valentines. The girls hop in and buckle up. Mr. Zebra drives Peppa and Zoe to Rebecca Rabbit's house next. Look, they live in a hole, they're burrow in the ground. Rebecca is very surprised. By the end of the day, Peppa and Zoe have delivered all the Valentines. Everyone can come to the party. The next day, everyone gets ready for the party. Peppa and George put up decorations. Daddy Pig blows up balloons. Mommy Pig bakes special treats. Everything is ready, says Peppa. Almost everything, says Daddy Pig. I have one last Valentine to deliver. The guests will be here soon, says Mommy Pig. Then it's a good thing it's for you, Mommy Pig, Daddy Pig says, handing her a card. All of Peppa's friends soon arrive at the party. Many have brought their own Valentines to share. Peppa feels very special. She and Zoe dance, sing, and eat sweet treats all day with their friends.
happy Valentine's Day, Peppa. Good. All right. This next book I really like. There aren't illustrations in it. There are actual photographs. It's called The Secret Life of Squirrels, A Love Story. And it's written by Nancy Rose. And she published this in 2014. Um, Little Brown and Company Books were the publishers. And the thing about this book, Nancy Rose, the author, and let me show you a picture at the back. She lives in Canada, and she actually took all these photographs in her backyard. She made all the little things we see in the book and just took photographs of the squirrels when they were around the little sets. You'll see. So again, these aren't illustrations. They're actual photographs. Look on the cover. There are little chairs. It looks like the squirrels are sitting up at the table with candles and treats. So let's read The Secret Life of Squirrels, a love story. Most squirrels spend their days scrambling up trees and searching for nuts. Not Mr. Peanuts. He is a rather unusual squirrel. Valentine's Day is coming soon. Mr. Peanuts enjoys decorating for the holiday. Nice job, Mr. Peanuts. So it looks like he's putting a heart up on a, on a string with a clothespin. But Valentine's Day can also be lonely, and Mr. Peanuts wishes he could meet another unusual squirrel to celebrate with. Mr. Peanuts tries to distract himself by working in his shed, but he can only think about how he would like to have someone to build something for. Shopping for food would be more fun if he were cooking dinner for a friend. And look, he's up on his hind legs and he's pushing a little cart with things inside and he has a peanut in his mouth. And at the end of the story, the author has a note about how she got the squirrels to do these things. We'll read that at the end. Mr. Peanuts goes to the park but he doesn't have a friend to play with at the little picnic table. Mr. Peanuts is sad. Being the only squirrel like him can be hard sometimes. Please don't cry, Mr. Peanuts. And look, he's holding some tissues. Please don't cry. On the way home, Mr. Peanut stops at the neighborhood wishing well. Do you know what a wishing well is? We have a little different kind of wishing well in our library lobby, a little fountain where some children, some people throw pennies in and make a wish. But some of them look like wells where water comes out and they often throw pennies or things to make a wish in the wishing well. And Mr. Peanuts wants to wish for someone special. Whenever Mr. Peanuts is feeling especially lonely, he goes to the bookstore. That always cheers him up. Today he sees another squirrel reading his favorite book. My name is Rosie, she says. Do you love books too? Look, all the little books here that the author created. This one we have too. It's, it's not a Valentine's Day book. It's a different secret life of squirrels. But all of the books pictured are about squirrels. This would be a fun book for you to check out and look at closely. 
After they leave the bookstore, Mr. Peanuts and Rosie begin chattering about books and sunflower seeds. Finally, Mr. Peanuts has a special squirrel friend. Mr. Peanuts and Rosie go to the park to play hopscotch with their peanuts. It's easy to hop when you have four legs. No, Rosie, that nut is for playing, not eating. Squirrels are used to climbing trees, so climbing a swing set is easy. Look at this little swing set with a slide and a swing. Mr. Peanuts decides to show Rosie his favorite game, jumping from trees. Look at Mr. Peanuts go. Squirrels can jump, jump quite a long distance. Boy, it looks like he's really sailing. As the sun goes down, Mr. Peanuts realizes he's absolutely nuts about Rosie. And look, they show little nuts kind of cut open that look like hearts. He's nuts about Rosie. The two squirrels come across another wishing well. Mr. Peanuts isn't sure what to wish for this time. Now that he's met Rosie, he has someone special. Then he gets an idea. And the little sign here by this wishing well says, wishes, five cents, kisses, 10 cents. So he gets a special idea. Rosie asks Mr. Peanuts, will you be my Valentine? She's holding a little Valentine with a red ribbon. Of course I will, chirps Rosie. I'm nuts about you. They celebrate with a romantic candlelit dinner. Being in love makes this the best Valentine's Day ever. Okay, and then at the end now, the author says about this book, and Nancy Rose, the author, said this book was inspired by the busy and inquisitive squirrels in my backyard in Canada. When these squirrels became regular visitors to my bird feeders, I began taking photographs of them and eventually added miniature, that means tiny, handmade sets for fun. So this would be called a set. She creates the sets, positions them on her deck, and watches through a glass door for the squirrel's approach. Her camera is on a tripod by the door so that she can capture the squirrels in action. She makes many of her own props, like the wishing wells we saw, swing sets, bookshelves, park benches, and furniture. These days, Nancy, the author's friends, even give her things to be used in the sets, like the little shopping cart that we saw. And then it says, the book, the author says, amazingly, I do not manipulate the photographs digitally to position the squirrels in the scenes. That means she just takes the photographs and the, just as the squirrels are just investigating the sets. She gets the squirrels to pose by hiding peanuts in and around the props. And then she enjoys photographing them because she loves their curiosity. So again, this would be a fun book for you to come in and check out so you can see all the detail of those little sets. Okay. Well, again, friends, I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day and that you get lots of Valentines and get lots of love.
And please stop down to the library when you can and pick up an activity kit or just to come in to make an appointment and come in and check out books. Thank you for listening. Bye.